Hello, dude and dudette, and welcome back to Dengeki Bunko Crossing Boy. So this video will be somewhat of a mini guide where I will give some personal opinions on some specific characters, how we can utilize the characters properly, and a little bit of other things that may or may not help you in your progress with the game. So to begin with, this game is all about the characters as normal, and the rarity again matters a lot. But I'm gonna go over some characters and give some personal opinions about them but before that i want to talk about one thing first and that is damage if you already played the game you will notice something very quickly and that is aoe damage is pretty pathetic single target damage vastly superior but they both have their pros and cons it's all up to you how you want to build your team Personally, I feel like single target damage is so much better than AoE DPS, but that's up to you how you want to build your team and which character you want to use. I'm not going to go into that. So let's start with Asuna. Everybody's going to get her from five day login, a consecutive login. She is a single target damager and as a single target damage, she does her job pretty darn well. Her second skill does a good amount of hits as well as giving her an attack buff. When that means by a good amount of hits, it means how many hits it can do for a single skill. Her normal attack also does a large amount of hits as well. Very useful. Why is that? Well, because that's how critical works in this game. Unlike in other games where when you score a critical, the entire attack is a critical, this game somewhat operates very differently with their skills. For ultimates, it's more consistent throughout the entire ultimate skill. But for normal skills, it's not every hit that, cr that crits. It's some of the attacks in the, within the combo that crits. This may lead to a discussion where the lower amount of hits is better because the damage is much more condensed, so the crits will score higher. But if you can somehow manage to increase their crit rate, then large multi-hits might be better. I'm not very sure. I've not really tested that because I've not gotten a good amount of critical roles for equipment and talents yet. Asuna, overall, I rate her very good for a free character, and she even comes in as an A rank, so her base stats are really incredible too. Feel free to use her. Her damage prioritizes the front line, which is good because there are a lot of missions that require to kill off the front line first. Yes, there are sub goals within quests. In order to gain a star, you need to fulfill that goal, and those goals include killing off the front enemy first, or the middle, or the last. I'll go over them in a short while. So after Asuna, we're going to talk about one who can attack the middle lane, when that is Kuru Yukihime. She's basically like Asuna, except she targets the middle lane. There's really nothing much to say about her. If you know about Asuna, Kuru Yukihime is about the exact same thing. A damage buff hits the middle line. Attack, middle line. Ultimate, also the middle line. Damage values, ratios, everything's about the same, even the amount of hits. Sure, it's a bit lesser than Asuna, but she still does a lot of multi-hits. Now for the final one that I want to talk about. I don't really have a DP, uh, a damage dealer that specifically attacks the rear because I don't have a Kuroko main yet, but I do have Emmy. All of you should gain Emmy at the very beginning. She's a free character that you get instantly, and she will be a very good character you can use. And if you got something better than a C rank, do use her. Extremely good. Why is that? Well, like I said for single target, she specifically targets the rear lane. Both her basic attack and her ultimate targets the rear lane. Now for her second skill. This is where it is extremely special that can dispel. What I mean by dispel, removing buffs. Removing the spelling buffs, whatever you want to call it. And it's an AOE. That is right. It's an AOE dispel. This is an incredible skill. It only costs three skill points as well. That is an amazing value. So you can just remove your opponent's attack and defense buffs, regen, everything with just this one skill. It's a fantastic skill. Add to that that she's also single target DPS, meaning she will be eliminating the rear line. Aside from that, her basic skill does three hits. However, what is special though is that her damage is split into both physical and I think you would call it magical. I don't know how you would describe it. It's two different values together. So what's special about this is that each, so the physical part can crit or the magical part can crit, the yellow or blue number, whichever it is. 
they crit separately. So in all intents and purposes, each time she attacks, it's three times, but times by two, so that's six. So in those six hits, they get each individually crit. So aside from enemy who can clear status effects, there's also Yukina, where her second skill also helps you with removing buffs. An extremely useful skill. But unfortunately, I, she's an AoE and her damage values aren't really that great. Aside from just a basic AoE and the spell, personally, it's just a personal preference. I'd rather use Emmy because she can kill her opponent a whole lot easier. If added to the fact that her ultimate only costs 8, it's up to you. I personally prefer Emmy. She can kill the opponent quickly. You might use something else. That does it about for single target damage dealers. If you have Kuroko though, she's a good option from Emmy because again, she operates pretty much like Asuna and Kuroyuki Hime. It's just that she attacks the rear line. She has two, two skills that attack the rear and of course the second skill does give her an attack buff. I unfortunately do not have her, I kinda do, but Luck is not with me, so nope. Now I'm gonna go into some sub members that I feel should be worth mentioning. And once again, they're single target damage dealers mostly. And that is Kuroko. Firstly, just like her main counterpart, she specifically targets the rear. It doesn't it might seem like not very cost efficient for a five cost attack. But what's special about it is that it has the ability to seal your opponent. I mean seal S-E-A-L or stun. Whatever you want to call it, disable, this attack can make them be stunned for a single turn. They cannot attack or anything. One free turn, and you still get the skill point from their turn. Then, of course, naturally, just like the main Kuroyuki Hime, her sub counterpart does the exact same thing. She attacks the middle line, and just like Kuroko, her skill disables the opponent extremely valuable as well as also a five cost nothing else much to say about it aside from that and since we got the back and the middle naturally we must have the front as well right but for this one is not asuna as there is no sub counterpart for asuna instead we have well himina i don't know how you pro properly pronounce it has the exact same skill as both Kurikihime and kuroko and that is a single target damage that seals the opponent so now we got those three that I mentioned that deal single target damage that also seals. Extremely valuable. I'm gonna go into the AoE aspect of the character. The very first character you'll get, for me is Mikoto. I don't know if you can get any other ones based on RNG or not. She suffices as an AoE damage dealer. However, you must also remember AoE damage is split amongst three enemies. So this damage value you see, 140, is actually divided by three to any single target that you hit. And like her railgun, oh my god, this damage value see, is very high. It's much more greater than Asuna's. But again, you have to divide this by three. So in actual fact, it's actually 265 per target, which is still a medium amount. But again, up to you how do you want to build your team. You can make it all AoE and kill them all at the same time. Or you can go for a full tier with single target DPS. You will need single target DPS though because there are many, many quests with sub goals that require you to kill a specific lane first. I call it lane. It's positioned. Whatever. Same thing. And she also comes with an AoE that leaves a scar. They call it a scar. You could also call it bleeding damage, burn damage, whatever. It's the same thing. Next, we have Shana, another AoE damage dealer. She, unlike Mikoto, does a higher burn damage value of nearly 32% at level 10. Actually, it's 31% if you round down. I'm dumb. However, one thing to note is that Shana's defense survivability is really really low so you might want to stick in a sub character to her that boosts defense on my last video with reviews i did mention that i wasn't sure whether or not the stats are added to the main character well here's confirmation they do and it's all the stats that the sub characters have that are added to the main character. So if you just got a legendary S rank sub character, don't be saddened. They're really good. Just still stick them onto a main character and just boost up their stats. So another interesting AOE damage dealer, he has an AOE that just really pisses me off so much. Why? It inflicts damage 
down by a quite a significant amount too for two whole turns so if you want to survive through some harder fights feel free to use him it's an aoe attack down debuff extremely good his main basic attack however is a single target attack so his single target at basic attack is merely a frontal attack it's all right now going back a little bit we have yuki here she is a sub member where her attack inflicts defense down extremely useful if you really don't have anything else better to use as a sub or you feel like your damage output is not good enough Put in Yuki, throw down that defense down, and let your main damage dealer just wail on the defense down target. It's extremely useful. Of course, then again, there's also some characters like Mikoto here, which actually does an AoE defense down. <laughs> Go figure, right? It all depends on what you have that helps. And then with debuffs, you also have Selty here, who's also a sub member that does an AoE attack down. I believe the attack down was a crit down. I'm not very sure. Sometimes I forget how to set the symbols. I might be Chinese, but if I haven't read Chinese for a very long time, somebody correct me on that later if you actually know Chinese. So another notable character will, you would have here is Yuji. You should be getting him for free if I remember correctly. If not, you might actually find him from polling as well. Why is he interesting? It's because of his skill, it removes status effects. You do want this skill. There, there are some missions with sub goals that require you to be cleared of status effects before you end the battle. However, do know what he clears are status effects. The other effect like bleed does not get cleared up by him. So you require another certain medical skill to heal that up. And for that, you have a few choices. One is Kirino. However, not really recommend as a frontline, but I guess for the sake of completing that mission, you could use her. Her damage is awfully pathetic. Her stats are really, really low. Don't be fooled by these stats right now. It's buffered by the equipment that she has. It's roughly below 350 or if not even less. I think it's actually at 300. Let me see how much this buff. 27, 39, so 66. That is 330. 330 dam attack damage at level 21 2 stars. It is an extremely low number. Her damage, absolutely pathetic. Her ultimate, kind of useless in my opinion. It's an 8 cost. Damage is an AoE split amongst 3 enemies, but it totals up to a 400. So even split amongst 3 enemies is only like 120 ish. If not even lesser, 125. The only special thing about this special is that it inflicts a debuff on the opponent where they will take increased damage on the next attack detonated by the last number here. So increased it by 17.5%. But it's, I'd rather use a full on single target damage special. It's so much stronger. I guess it just synergizes with AoE damage teams, but it's not really that good, is it? I'd rather just throw in a railgun or something. So her heal here removes bleeding effects. Nothing much to say about it. You would have to use her or another healing character that removes bleeds. So how to tell what removes the bleed and what doesn't remove bleed? Simple. If it heals HP, it heals bleed. It's that simple. So aside from Kirino, you will also have Irio who also heals. But the thing is, she's a sub member. So... It leaves open for other options to be used. And then you have Leafa as well. She's given to you for free. And if you properly equip her, her heal is pretty potent, I guess. And again, as long as you heal HP, you heal bleed. So that's about all the notable characters that I personally discovered. There might be a lot more hidden gems that could combine amazing uh, combinations. For instance, Tomaka here. Her skills, she's a complete support character. She has no way of dealing damage. Her basic attack is basically giving your team a two-turn regen buff. I guess it's a free hit, free heal every turn for 10%. And then her second skill is a five-cost skill that buffs your team's defense by an ungodly amount. So if you ever need something to survive with, I guess she's your pick. And her ultimate buffs your attack. 
It's a ungodly amount of buff too, a 45% attack buff. Anyways, I think that's all the characters that I've gotten where I can give you a positive, where I can give you some details about this. So on to the next subject, should I level X character? The answer is yes, even if it is a C rank and I will tell you why. Why would you level a C rank even though you might be able to get a B rank or A rank of the character? Well, here's your answer. You can do something called inherit. I think all the other games should get this, but I guess this is the only game where you will have maybe one cast of characters. I don't think they'll be making any more variations than these. I'm not very sure how they're gonna do it because right now, like I said in my previous review, all the moves that you see in game are completely ripped straight out from the PlayStation version of the game. So would they make any new variations? Let's see how well the developers are going to plan this. Maybe what they will, maybe they won't. That's not for me for to discuss. So enough bullshitting, back to the inherit system. So I have an example ready right here. I have a level 5 2-star Enju. And here I have a level a rank A level 1. So, say for instance that she was not actually level 5, say 30, and it takes a lot of time, well not exactly a lot of time, but it does take quite a amount of resources to level all the way to 30. So they have an amazing system here, and that's called the Inherit System. It is the bottom little circle right, and what it does is that exactly as the title implies, it inherits. So I choose my A rank here, and what it will inherit, the level, the stars, and it will also inherit the best of the talent. Let me just show you. I just put it here. It just takes the highest value of the two t the two options. And that is my S rank and my C rank is completely ignored. I had to make a correction here because I wasn't really paying attention. It's not that it requires a character gem. In fact, that it recycles the character for you and gives you the character gem that you use for inherit. So if the C rank is going to be assimilated, you get one gem. If it was a B rank, you get three gems. It was a, that's how the inheritance system works. It recycles the character for you. So top notch. So say, look, I have here, I have a main version of Yukina and a sub version of her. If I scrap this subversion of her, I will get the exact same character gem. The character gem can be used for both sub and mains. So let me show you. I'm gonna go into the scrap button, which is the top second button from the left, and then I will go ahead and scrap Yukina. As you can see, I will gain a Yukina crystal, and which Yukina crystal can be used for upgrading your other Yukinas, whether main or sub. So I'm gonna go ahead and scrap this Yukina. There we go, we got a Yukina Crystal, head right back, go to this Yukina, and then we can go to Talents, and as you can see, I got a Yukina Crystal right there that can be used for whatever. I for Talents, you do have these Talent Crystals from Quests, Daily Login, a variety of ways to gain. So, so for teams, I don't really know how they look like. This is what I've been using. It works so far, could be better I guess. I've been exchanging Shana with Emmy here and there because currently where I'm at, there's so many buffs that the enemies use and those are defense buffs that just stops you from completing your quest within 30 turns. I'm not a whaler on this game. I can't really get all S's and A ranks to buff up my attack damage and such and such. So the only way is to grind and use the tools that I'm given with. And the spell, Emmy, highly recommend you use her. Kind of sexual, but... It's something you want to use. So now I'm going to show you four things that you should pay attention to when you do your missions. And these are the mission goals that I talked about earlier. Where I have to eliminate the front enemy first, middle, rear, and the last one using your special skill to kill at least one enemy. It is very simple. All you have to do is to really memorize these very few characters. For the first three, we have to defeat a specific enemy at a specific role first. It is very simple easy to remember so you just have to recognize these specific ones so for the first one this means front and this one means middle and this last one means rear well that's cantonese i want to know how to say it in mandarin because i'm not very good at mandarin that's the three characters you have to recognize hopefully it helps out for you you can easily cross reference these characters with your character skills. Remember what I said how Asuna attacks the front row? 
Well, you can cross-reference with her skill, you can cross-reference with Yukihime, Kuro Yukihime, and then you can also cross-reference with characters that attack at the rear. It's quite simple if you just try to think of outside of the box. And the last one, they call it, if you go directly to Google Translate, they call it sub limation but in chinese it's more like special or finisher i don't know how would you pro correctly translate it's somewhere around there so i call it an ultimate because i'm just used to playing other games where it's like where you call these special skills ultimates and such and such so I go with ultimate. Now there's this quest I think a lot of people might be confused about due to trying to use Google Translate if they can't read Chinese. So I'm here to clear it up and that is this extra quest. What that means is actually you need to use a dispel. You have to defeat your enemies when they are clear of status. The hint was the enemy crystal. If you could figure that out, props to you. If you couldn't, I hope I helped you out. That's all I have for this mini guide here. I've been talking for a very, very long time. I hope all this recording goes well. God, editing is probably horrible too. Anyways, like if you like this, subscribe for more, and I'll see you all on the next video.